Hey, hey, everybody. Namaste. It's Becca Patty. Mm, so nice to spend some time with you today. I know that there is self-isolation and a minimization of social contact. And so let's spend a couple of minutes together lifting up our vibration and just giving ourselves a little bit of love and having good conversation. Um, this is just a couple minute chit chat. If you want to stop the video after this, uh, totally fine by me. You can also continue on in a probably 20 to 30, I'm not really sure yet, uh, yoga practice for all levels. I want it really accessible to anyone who's jumping online wanting to just get in a nice little workout for their mind and their body. So I've got my yoga mat all ready to go. So if you are wanting to do that, please um, stop the video now, put your yoga mat down and then uh, continue on with us. But there was a visualization that came to me last night about everything that's kind of going on in the world and more so maybe just within myself, like how it feels for me personally. It's like we're in a fire and things are getting burned to the ground. And I mean that of everything from ego to our businesses, to a sense of our social conduct, to what's appropriate, to you know elbow uh, bumping as opposed to hugs. Everything that we've known in this world as it is, is burning to the fucking ground. But you know what happens after a fire? There is this beautiful calmness, like a smoldering, a sense of needing to just maintain, a pulling back, a witnessing. And then out of nowhere, new growth begins. And it's not the same growth that was there before. The landscape, in fact, as it slowly starts to recreate itself, changes, shifts, and is almost completely unrecognizable from what it was before. Some of these little seeds need the fire to break themselves open so that they can then plant themselves in the burnt soil so that they are the first ones to grow and they are sort of fast growing, low lying bushes. They need the sunlight to grow, which means that all the trees that have now burned, that used to shade them and restrict their growth, are minimized or completely gone. So therefore, there is an abundance of this new ground growth. And then from there, because they offer shade to what is beneath them, and there is still an accessibility to the sun, different growth occurs. Different plants pop up and a newness starts to sort of spring forth. And it becomes this new landscape full of possibilities. The death of something is very challenging. The concept that what once was will no longer be because this disease has definitely taken hold on many people are affected. Businesses, people, just the way we interact with one another. But I promise you, my friends, wait for it. The fire will slowly be gone and it will simmer and we will quiet down and new growth will occur. That is the cycle. There is always birth and there is also death and there are sometimes these interesting spaces in between where we're confused and frustrated and we're not really sure but hang on keep your hope keep your spiritual practices your mental wellness allow yourself to commit to the progress of where this could take you rather than sitting in fear sitting in that fire and not allowing it to eventually burn out. My dear friends, I love you and we'll see each other very soon. For those of you who are continuing on with a yoga practice, uh, let's do that now. For all of you who are now signing off, I love you and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Let's practice some yoga, shall we? All right, I've been sitting on my foot, ouch, and um, 
So because I've been homebound, um, not being able to run or do my yoga at a gym or any other place, I have um, been running stairs <laughs> in my condo. And yes, they are um, cement staircases, so it is soundproof. I'm not bothering my neighbors. And I've done a lot of stairs. Let's just check in to see how this yoga bun looks. Oh yeah, divine. And you know what's also a little bit more hilarious? Is so today, one of my first days without a yoga class in the morning, um, I go to like wash my face and do all that kind of stuff and the water's been shut off for a few hours. So um, you've got uh, Dirty Becca right now, so just <laughs> be aware that, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta fucking flow with this shit. So this is a class about rebirth, growing, acknowledging that sometimes we gotta fucking just drop down into the ashes before we can rise back up again. So let's start in mountain pose, shall we? Let's do it. So you'll come to your comfortable standing, right? We wanna make sure that we've got equal weight in the fronts of the feet and the back. Let your toes be nice and light and easy. So I really don't love, you know, that real strict uh, Tadasana. I find that really bizarre, you know, very militant. It's not really me. You can do what you wanna do, I don't really care. Um, I prefer more of just, you know, keep it relaxed, right? Let your shoulders uh, be underneath your earlobes, shoulders on hips, you know the drill. It's, it's like just stack yourself uh, nice and easy. And then you'll take an inhale, reaching your arms forward and up towards the ceiling, rising. And as you do, let's sit down into a chair pose. And so we'll allow ourselves to land into Utkatasana. Noticing that the weight shifts a little bit further forward into the base of the toes, just recognizing that you have an accessibility to lifting your heel a little bit, just kind of stretching out the calves if you need that. And I'm laughing because honestly, the backs of my legs are on fire already. So if you see me drop out for a moment, please just let me do that and uh, you can continue on. So let's take a twist towards the right hand side. So your left elbow will go to the outer edge of your right knee. Now notice that my hip isn't going to the side. I'm keeping it pulled back behind me and rotating my heart towards the right. If you haven't practiced with me, I mirror you. So that means that I'm actually going left, but you're gonna go right so that we're all going the same direction, okay? So I do understand that I look like I'm going to the left, but I'm actually going to the right, okay. Here we are. So we're in this movement, sitting down nice and low, allowing our heart to rise up, pausing here. If you wanna take your bottom hand to your shoulder, reaching up your top hand towards the ceiling, do that. Keep rolling back your left hip a little bit further. Keep your knees in line with your ankles. Maybe you take that top hand and wrap it around and drop it to the inseam of your left inner thigh. One more big inhale. And as you exhale, let's take it to forward fold. So eventually unwinding this, dropping fingertips to the floor and maybe lifting one heel up and then the other. So you're neutralizing, letting go, getting, letting the head hang out. Yeah, we're not trying to do anything, we're simply moving with what is. Yeah. And then sit down nice and low once again, lifting your heart, palms touch. We'll take it to the other side, let's go left. Right elbow goes to the outer edge of your left knee. Keep the knees on top of the ankles. Your option, hang out here. Bottom palm to the top shoulder, top hand reaches up. You've got the option of taking your hand to your low back or bringing it all the way down to the inseam of your inner right leg. Holding here for three. Holding here for two. You've got it, one more big inhale, allowing yourself to come all the way back around to center. Forward fold, letting fingertips come down, pedal it out. Inhale to a half lift, palms on your shins, opening up the heart space. Hello. Exhale, fingertips come down, soften up, step it back with your left foot only. Big, big step, your right foot stays in front. Exhale, let's lower down your knee towards the floor. Pause here as you inhale, point your back toes away. Bring your hands on the top side of the upper thigh, press back your heart and lengthen up. Nice. So you wanna feel like your bum is kind of tucking down a little bit so that you can maintain an openness in the front side of your hip flexor, of your back leg, okay? That's kind of where this stretches. If you're just hanging out and dropping your, your pubic bone to the floor, that's not really the pose. Pull back a little bit, drop under, and feel a bit more through the front side of your leg. Inhale, left arm reaches up. Maybe you take a side bend. Maybe right fingertips start to land closer towards the floor. Good, holding here, one more big inhale. 
Let's take a twist. So your elbow now drops to the outer edge of your knee. Keep a strong leg. So watch that you haven't done that, right? That's common. Keep your foot engaged, palms pressed together, and open up your heart. Now I see this a lot in classes. One elbow up, one elbow down. That's not actually the pose. Lift up your heart, bring one elbow forward and one elbow back so that you're higher, your heart is longer, your head is reaching up towards the ceiling. And then you can look over your back shoulder. One more big inhale. And as you exhale, take your fingertips down towards the floor. Just slide back a little bit into your shin and maybe you scooch your front foot forward. So now we've got like a hamstring stretch on your right leg. So this time squeeze your inner thighs and your back knee is underneath your hip. Make sure that's happening. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and up. Exhale, take your hands back down. Just tap them to the floor. Inhale, arms out to the side or forward, reach up, squeeze the inner thighs, use the leg muscles. Exhale, drop in, let your head hang if you like. Last time, inhale, we'll rise, reach the arms up. And exhale, take the fingertips down. Now we're holding for the hamstring stretch. So slowly start to bring yourself forward in this. Oh my God. <laughs> Like, honestly, I can't even tell you. I know you don't really want to hear about how sore I am, but oh my God, it is quite amazing. Like, I woke up this morning and I felt like I was 100 years old, like sort of hobbling to the bathroom. Amazing. Okay. So come on forward a little bit more. So letting the head reach towards the foot, try to lengthen out your back leg, toes up to the sky. Nice. And then bring your hands to the inside edge of your front foot and walk around so you end up in gate pose. So this means that your left leg, which is behind you, is pointing at a 90 degree, and your right foot is down to the floor. Inhale, open up your arms, okay? So your straight leg is now towards me. And let's come forward, hand to the thigh, reach your arm up and over, then bring yourself all the way back to center. Exhale, back fingertips go to the floor. Reach your back arm or your top arm towards the back of your mat. Inhale, open this up. Exhale, lean forward towards the front of your room, side bending. Nice. Inhale, open this up. Bring yourself back. So if you're getting a sore knee, make sure you roll your mat under or, or put a foamy or something there or a, a little blanket, okay? One last time. We're going to hold here. So we're reaching towards the right thigh. Maybe your bum sticks back a little bit so you can come down a little bit further, but watch that you're not dropping forward with your chest, huh? Allow yourself to open this up towards the left-hand side. One more big inhale. And then slowly bring yourself all the way back upright, palms to touch, hands come to the inside. Now pivot, your back knee has to work with you. As you turn yourself all the way forward, you're back into a low lunge, right? Lift up your back knee, step it into your first downward facing dog. Let your hands be active. Strong through the index and the pinky and the outer edges of your palm, making sure that you're really pressing back into the heels. Noticing how that feels. Come forward into an upper push-up. Take a half if you need. Exhale when you're ready through chaturanga or floor. Please don't stick your bum up. Keep your bum tucked in. Draw to the 90 degrees or floor. Rise it into little cobra, cobra, upward dog, shoulders back. This is not the pose, right? We want to make sure that if your knees are lifted, your heart is elevated. Look up slightly and then take it back into downward facing dog. Look forward to the top of the mat. You can take your little hopper jump. I'm gonna step this time to the top of the mat. Inhale, hands to shins, half lift, or peace fingers to floor. You know you get a little bit of a longer spine if you have longer hamstrings there with this. Exhale, forward fold. Come to standing, rise. So use your back muscles, pull your core in, palms touch above the head, exhale. Bring your hands down, nicely done. Inhale, let's rise it up. Exhale, take it to forward fold, dropping down, yes. Inhale to a half lift, lengthen up, your heart goes long. Exhale, fingertips come down, maybe even palms depending, soften your knees. You're taking your right foot to the back, it's a big, big step behind your back toes and then lower down your knee to the floor, point away your back toes. 
Yeah, so the reason why you take that massive step is just so your back hip can have a nice long line to your back knee, right? It opens it up. And then as you come up, you tuck your bum down a little bit, sending your hands on the front thigh and lifting your heart space. Mm -hmm. And just see how that feels. Like, if you got tightness in your quad, you're going to feel it. So we're down in the earth, but we're not like this. This is hangy and does nothing. We want to engage the inner thighs, take the tail down, and be really active in that space. Yeah. You don't have to do big movements in yoga to get the results if you're engaging and knowing how to tweak the pose a little bit for your body. And then you can rise up through your right arm. And maybe you take the side bend. Now, in order to do the side bend, try not to do this, yeah? You know what I mean? Like come forward and try and drop your hands to the floor. Keep yourself back. And if you then can, you can drop your fingertips to the floor, but otherwise keep them hovering. Think about reaching your top fingertips more so between where a ceiling and your wall meets, right? So instead of like this, you're like that, okay? Good, so one more big inhale. And then bring your arms back up, hands to either side of your front foot. We're shifting back into this. Okay, hamstring stretch. Maybe slide up your left foot a little bit. Back hip over back knee. We've got this, right? So we're doing it. Here we are, squeezing everything in as we rise on up. Inhale. You can also just keep your fingertips down and stretch hamstring. Exhale, fingertips down. Uh -huh. Inhale, rise. Muscles that maybe we didn't even know existed. Your front quad is going to be moving. Your front foot is going to want to be going like this. Keep it still. Inhale, rise. Last time. Exhale, take your fingertips down. We're going to hold it out here and work it into a little bit of a forward fold. So you're going to feel it in the back of your leg, right? If you have hamstring issues, my God, soften your knee up a little bit, right? There is no point of ripping, tearing. There's lots of yoga to be had. Mm -hmm. As long as you're breathing, my friends, you're doing it. Like that's, that's literally it. Breathe and you've got it. Beautiful. You've just done yoga, right? Like all of this other stuff is excellent for sort of opening up the channels of the body to be more receptive. But quite honestly, the yoga of the mind is, is breath work and positivity and affirmations. You can do that, you know, sitting down, laying down, whatever. And then bring your hands to the inside edge of your front foot and you'll start walking around. Now remember, you gotta pivot so that now your right knee is at that 90 degree, your left leg is um, um, straight. Think about your foot to your knee being in the same line and then come up, okay? So come forward towards me, reaching your top arm up and over. Inhale, opening this up and taking your fingertips to the back, stretching long, 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 long. Woo! Inhale, open this up. Exhale, bring it over to the front. Inhale, open up. Exhale, back. That'll be the last time, and then we're gonna hold it towards me. The side bend, hand towards the thigh. Reach, reach, reach. Option is just to stick your bum a little bit back as you start to maneuver towards your front leg. Remember, we're not here. This is a side bend. One more big breath in. Then eventually your body comes all the way back up, right hands towards the floor, walk around. So we've got to use your back leg as well. Come back into a low lunge. Okay, knee over ankle, you've got it. Back toes tuck, step it back, downward dog. Still noticing the little areas in your body that need to be stretched out. Let's take your right leg high to the sky behind you. Gaze it forward and step it up to the top of the mat. So maybe you use your fingertips, but we want to take a very easy light step, yeah? Back toes, your heel is over top of them. Squeeze your inner thighs in and then reach towards the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Nice. Beautiful, holding it out here. Palms come all the way to touch. I just realized a little movement we missed on the other side, but we'll get to it. So have your elbow attached to the outer edge of your knee. Remember, we took this twist earlier, so see how that feels. One more big breath in here. Then gently take your left fingertips down towards the floor. Sweep open your right hand. Now you can always do this on your bottom knee, right? So your back knee can come down. Feel free. Holding here for three. 
Holding here for two. Holding here for one, lower down your hand to either side of the front foot, back knee touches earth, point your toes away, walk your hands to the inside, and then sit your hips down and let your elbows fall towards the floor in lizard pose. Now here's the thing, could you keep your knee behind your ankle? What I mean is if you're really far forward, this causes pressure on your knee joint. So come back a little bit in that. Your palms can be up, and this is so beautiful, it's like, you know, I'm in the dirt right now. I'm in that ashy fire. I might even still be smoldering, but here I am. I'm like ready. It's like, it's okay. It's okay to be silent. It's okay to be quiet. It's okay to get to know myself. It's okay to be in my house and learn how to just be. Right? Right. It's okay. We're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And I'm going to be fine. And more than fine. <laughs> okay. So we're holding here. One more big inhale. Nice, and then eventually you'll bring yourself all the way back upright. Just walk your, scoot your foot back a little bit if you had your legs a little wide. Lift up your back knee so your toes are tucked under. Step to the outside edge of your left pinky. Heels are in, toes are out. We're sitting down Malasana. Whoo, okay. <laughs> oh, God. Mm-hmm. It's amazing what happens when you change up a routine, hey? Okay, so here we are. You might even find that that little rocking motion gets a bit more into your hip flexors, checking in with the crease of the hips, right? This is so good for digestion, low back discomfort. It helps to eliminate that. Even period cramps if you got some stuff going on there, right? It's like a little massage on your organs. <laughs> One more big inhale here. Good, and then eventually you'll bring your palms to the floor, fingertips, and you'll bring your bum up into a forward fold. Keep your feet in line or parallel to the outer edges of your mat. Use your peace fingers, wrap around your big toes, have your thumbs on your toes, and settle into a forward fold shape. So notice that your shoulders are not around your ears. Pull them back so that they kind of slide up in towards your hips. Maybe you bend out one knee and then the other if you're still experiencing some tightness like I am, just recognizing that eventually stretching does help. One more big inhale. And as you exhale, slowly start to walk yourself upright, palms to the floor, take a step back, upper push-up, let's flow. You can choose downward dog or not to flow at all. Child's pose is a good option. Exhale, chaturanga. So please do not have your bum up. Tuck your bum down and have your shoulders in line with your elbows. Let's go upward dog. Chaturanga is a very, very specific movement so that we don't hurt our backs. We need to use our legs and our core. And eventually, let's bring ourselves into downward facing dog. All right, inhale, take your left leg high. Look forward, step your foot all the way up to the top of the mat. Keep up high on your back toe, squeeze your inner thighs in. Beautiful, inhale, your arms come up. Beautiful. So we're diving down into that front knee, you're high in your back toes. Maybe even your back knee is a little bit bent. Like when you jam your back leg away, you lock out your hips. So soften up a little bit so your hips can be freer. Then your palms come to touch and we take the twist. So your elbow goes to the outer edge of your left knee. Holding here for three, holding here for two, and then eventually you'll come back to center, dropping down your right fingertips or palm. Inhaling, reaching open your left fingertips to the ceiling. Exhale, your hands come down to the inside edges of the front foot. Back knee comes down, not lizard quite yet. Point away your toes. Inhale, reach your arms up. That little movement we miss. Let's take it to a low lunge twist. Palms come to touch. And then eventually it's one elbow forward and one elbow back. Remember, it's not that. You see the difference in my heart there? You're actually coming up a little bit and taking that twist. Good, one more big inhale. Mm -hmm. And then bring yourself all the way around, fingertips down now. Take your back knee like half an inch to two inches behind you and then turn your toes out. I get it, sometimes we gotta keep the palms on the floor. If you have something to rest your elbows equally on, feel free. But if it's possible, and maybe you've done this enough times that you can drop your elbows down, your palms can be face up, your head is relaxed maybe, 
letting go. Nice, yeah, really nice. One more big inhale, we're here. And then slowly you'll bring yourself all the way back upright. This time walk your foot in enough that your hands can go to either side. Your back toes need to tuck under so you can lift the back knee. Now slide your back shin all the way up to the front of your mat. So you sort of look like that, okay? You're sitting on your heel. Now, if that's ridiculous, I get it. Some of us can't do that. You can put like a foamy or something underneath your bum or walk your foot forward so you're here, okay? That's the difference. So as we stay here, you have your front foot with your front knee. Inhale, up goes your right arm. Your option is to take a little hug and spiral or elbow to the outer edge of the knee and spiral around. Now watch this though. We're not doing that, right? It's like the knee has to stay up. So one more big inhale. Good, and then eventually you can bring yourself all the way back around. Okay, I'm gonna be a little too close to you, so I'm gonna slide back a little bit. This leg is going to come forward, okay? And we'll be high onto these toes, you'll see. So eventually come up high on your left toes, lift up with some core and take your right leg forward and drop it to the floor, okay? Then maybe some of you stay here and just pause with working on the bottoms of your foot on the left side. Otherwise, hands in namaste. Maybe some of you choose fingertips down and elevate up through your right foot. If some of you can, I'm not sure if my body will allow it. There we go. Hands can come up. Good. Either way, hands come down. We're taking this to warrior three. Eventually, leg comes in. If you have to drop it to the floor, go ahead. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes making noise isn't the worst thing. Ooh, you got this. Fingertips, maybe piece fingers to the floor. Neutralize your hips and your head goes forward. Heels goes back. Nice. Holding here for three. Maybe even your arms come up for a bit of balance. One last big breath in. Good, we can't do any regrowth without that last movement of tree. So come forward with your right knee into your chest. You've got it. If you had to drop out, come back in, it doesn't matter. Eventually, knee out towards the side. Your option, foot kickstand. Watch this hip, we're not here, we're here. Your foot comes up, your leg comes all the way up into tree pose, palms, namaste, or let's reach it. You can even interlock it and press up. Holding here for three, holding here for two, and then for one, your palms will come all the way down into the heart space. Let your leg relax to the floor, slowly lower it down. Inhale, arms wide, palms come to touch. Exhale, forward fold, down we go. Now here's the thing, you can stay very passive. Let your hands go, let your arms do what they want or go active. So hands to the ankles and pull yourself down. You can also use the grip where your hands go around your ankles from the backside so your, your wrist ends up crossing. I don't know if that even made any sense. Your wrist, your wrists cross, <laughs> okay? And then we take the forward fold. Shoulders away from the ears, hanging out here for three. Spreading out through the sit bones, cores are really strong looking back behind you. One last big breath in. And then slowly release fingertips to the floor. Now take your left shin and just lower it down to the floor. Mm -hmm. Roll back, right? So now you've got front foot, which is your right one in line with your left knee. Inhale up goes your left arm, option A, hug or elbow. Now here's the thing, if this doesn't work, you can also go here and sit behind. Okay, that's always an option is to change what we're doing for your body. All right. Holding here for three, holding here for two, holding here for one, last big twist, and then bring it around to center. We're bringing our left leg forward. Come up high on your toes. <laughs> Eventually, swing your left leg forward and drop it to the floor. Maybe you take your palms up. Maybe some of you stay here, fingertips to the floor, hands in namaste, or drop your fingertips down and eventually, you gotta lean back a little bit to get the leg up. 
not sure on this side if my calf will allow me, but I'll try. Maybe your hands come up. One more big inhale here. <laughs> Fingertips come down. Squeeze the inner thighs and drop the foot if you need. And bring it all the way back into your warrior three. Yes. So second toe facing down in the top leg. So notice it is not an open pose like this, right? The toes are not over here. The toes are down. And then eventually you start to lift up your heart. Maybe fingertips reaching back, sending the gaze forward. Holding here for three. Nice, for two, it's tree pose. You've got this, come forward and up. Knee comes in, interlocking your hands. Again, don't worry about dropping the foot down. If that happens, it happens, right? And then taking your kickstand, hip in, your lower tree, or taking it all the way up into whatever tree. And if you know lotus, do lotus, doesn't matter, right? You do your variations. Palms to touch, hands up. So you can interlock your hands, do whatever. One more big breath in. And then your palms will eventually make their way into the heart space. All the way down, we got one last flow to the earth. Take your knee forward and down goes the foot. Come to the top of the mat if you've moved around. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, take it to forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, it's either step it back, upper push up, take a little hop to Chaturanga. Upward dog cobra. Drop your knees, child's pose. So holding here, maybe the knees are a little wide, taking some time to walk the hands out a little bit further, dropping the forehead to the floor. Letting it go. If you'd like to stay in your child's pose, feel free for those of you who wanna play a little bit with curl. Let's go ahead, tuck the toes under, come back. You can also just hang out in toe squat with the knees wide, palms to touch as well. You're here, that's beautiful. Otherwise, let's just finish off with a bit of a curl that's always nice to feel like you're flying away from the ground and giving yourself a little bit of freedom in that process, yeah? So hands come down. You can choose what I call like kind of baby curl, which is like your the creases of your knees go into the elbows. So you end up kind of just hinging on your elbows themselves. So it looks like this. You're not really using strength, you're just using leverage. If you wanna go a little higher, you know your own variations. Come on up, take those knees where you feel are appropriate. Come on forward. Your toes tuck in and up towards your bum. Look forward, do not look down. Meaning you're looking down, but you're looking forward on your mat. One more big inhale. As you exhale, slowly toes to the floor, back into toe squat, palms to touch. Nice, let the hands come down to the floor. Walk your legs out. Wherever you are, the legs can be soft if you need. You're interlocking your hands behind you, pressing, pressing the fists to the floor as you lift your heart. And if that's impossible, palms wide. It's okay. Yeah. Good. One more big inhale. Holding here. Nice, and then eventually come all the way back to neutral. Let's take the toes, relax them, and drop yourself into a variation of a very passive Paschimottanasana, or forward fold. Doesn't always look pretty, does it? But it's okay. <laughs> this whole scenario isn't all pretty, right? We're just doing the best we can. Letting go. Feeling the back of the head kind of hanging down, getting your neck open. One more big breath in. Nice, and then we'll roll our spines, coming all the way back upright. Reach your arms up high. Palms come into the heart space. Let's do that again. You can soften your legs if you like. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, into the heart space. One more time, yeah. Inhale, reach. And exhale. My recommendation would be to do a little cool down and then move yourself into Shavasana. Um, I think that's just something that we can all do on our own. So I'm gonna scooch up a little bit closer to you and just leave you with 
a little bit of a chant. We all know, for if you practice some yoga, Om Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.